Okay, this is cool. All right, um, yeah, so the first time I did this, just a few hours ago, um, my husband was using Photoshop and it was a little crazy because he kept, the, the, the program kept syncing. It kept syncing up and down and anyway, it turned out that the connection was terrible. I didn't realize it was gonna be so terrible, but it was. So, um, the little piece has dried and I thought I would take some time to finish painting it and maybe um, do some chatting with you guys and uh, see if there's any questions. I wonder if more people are gonna show up or not, we'll see. <laughs> um, and, um, and if not, this will just end up on YouTube. This is so much cooler than having to edit it and then post it. So I'm really enjoying this. Oh, and I also wanted to talk to you guys later about these. These are some brushes that I am reviewing. Um, they're from Rosemary & Co. I'm not really reviewing them. I guess you could kind of say I'm reviewing them. Anyway, they're from Rosemary & Co. Now this is the Triangle Series 40, and I have already done a review on that, but they sent me a few brushes, which was kind of crazy because we had been talking back and forth for like the last almost three years, and I had completely forgotten and totally given up on ever hearing from this company again. I mean, nothing was wrong, of course, but I just, the whole thing kind of, I don't know, fell away, I guess. And then all of a sudden I got a box with a whole bunch of stuff in it. So this is um, the size eight and this is size 10. So when I ordered size 40, it was the only one that they offered. These are the triangle brushes. Let's see if I can, oh wow, that's on tight. They're the triangle brushes. And you can see, it's very interesting. The point is not in the center. The point is actually to one side. So I don't know if we can see that. Probably not. Can you see that if I, <laughs> okay. So it's a triangle, right? It's flat here and it's pointed towards me at the moment. And the point is towards, towards the top. So it's really hard to show you. Yeah, so it's not in the center. So somebody made a comment about this and said, um, they had ordered it and it had arrived and the point was in the center so they sent it back and asked for a new one and the point was in the center again. So I'm here to tell you the point is not supposed to be in the center. It's off to the side and that's part of what makes it amazing. Um, I had a few of these for a long time and they were much smaller and I love them. I use them all the time. So when I realized that Rosemary Co. had one, I had to actually buy it and then um, I wrote them not too long ago two years ago or so, and asked if they had um, smaller ones, and they didn't. And then, um, you know, all of a sudden they decided to, to send me these. So I don't know if I had anything to do with it. I doubt it. But, um, but I think it's pretty cool that they have gone ahead and made smaller sizes because this big one is awesome, but if you're doing anything tiny, the smaller sizes are really uh, important. I think I'm talking myself out of out of breath here <laughs> breathe girl that's what i gotta do i gotta learn to breathe jason wants to learn to paint with watercolors oh marcy you're so awesome okay hi joyce uh learning creative acres that's marcy kaylee i said hi and we have a few people actually this is cool more people are coming um i don't know how long i have or at least i have I don't know how long I have until um, my husband comes home and makes a racket, so. <laughs> but I have at least 45 minutes because it's kind of snowy and icy out there. So we'll see how we go, or how we get. Um, <laughs> okay, so the size 10, I think that would be a little big for this, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the size eight. Now I didn't prep these. I should have thought about it and I should have prepped these. But that's okay, because actually I can show you guys how to do it. If you haven't seen the tutorial on when you get a brand new brush, you wanna soak it. So. I'm gonna, I don't wanna put it in the bottom, I just wanna gently soak it. If, let's see, this one, if you see, it's really pointy, it's hard. You see that? It's hard in here, I can, I can tap at it. Um, we want that to come out. This is gum arabic, and it's protecting the, the bristles on the brush, which is very good. Um, it's very important, you, you don't wanna break it. If you break that, you could potentially break uh, some of the the bristles some of the hairs on the side and Obviously if you break the hairs um, you're kind of Messing with the brush, right? We don't want to do that so first thing to do is put it into some water and Just wiggle it around for a minute 
and it will start to soften. It really doesn't take very long. Now, if I was doing this in a tutorial where I had time to edit, I would just quickly jump to the part where it's done. <laughs> but of course, I'm not. Um, so you can, yeah, see, it's, it's gotten soft already. So the gum arabic has come out. Now, gum arabic is actually a product. It's a sap from a tree, and, um, and it's edible. It's, it's edible. It's non-toxic. Um, they put it on cake. It's in a lot of icing and such things. It creates a shine on stuff. Oh, this brush is amazing. I can already tell. Just by doing that, I can already feel the difference. Um, I'd have to look it up and go back and see what it's made of at the moment. I don't know. And this is not actually a promotion on this brush. I just want to tell you about it because it's new and we're going to use it. Or I'm going to use it because it's new and I like using new things. Okay, can you guys see this? Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, anything new is awesome. All right, so um, I have my mini little palette. I also have a big palette here too. We've got, we've got this one as well. You guys have probably seen this like a hundred times. Um, and there is a legend. I found the legend. Actually, I have a little tutorial about finding the legend that goes with it, which was so awesome because before I had the legend, I couldn't use this palette anymore. At least I couldn't tell you guys what I was using. So I will be pulling some of the paint off here. Now, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab um, a brush that's um, not so good quality, let's say dollar store kind of brush, like really crummy, nothing important brush. And I want to spray these first and then I want to lift it. And we're going to, you know, I mean, I'm sure you guys know how to do this, but you want to go round and round and round. Now that would ruin my new brush, right? If I was going round, oops, going round and round or digging in the paint like that. And once I have it, I'm going to come over here. If I put a little bit of water and I kind of twist it, I find that I can get more paint off the brush or even go on the edge to kind of push it off but it's not a big deal you can also rub it off or I don't like to put it back in the water right away I like to you know if the brush is dirty rub it on some paper towel and then bring it to my water and that way I don't have to jump up and grab new water all the time so um so I'll select some colors from here and if you guys aren't sure just let me know is it a tiny bit fuzzy mm. yeah it looks a little fuzzy um, nobody's online. My heater just kicked in. Tell me you guys can't hear that because it's getting cold in here. It'd be nice to keep my heater on. <laughs> um, yeah, nobody's online. So, um, actually it should be okay. Or at least it's the, the, um, the quality, the picture quality should be okay. Um, maybe in, after it's, it's loaded and you know, YouTube has done its thing to it. So I hope it gets better. So I will select some of those colors and drop them in here. These, I'm not even really sure what these are. Does that matter? Does anybody care what the colors are? Okay, so what I wanna do is, I don't wanna use this brush. This is just my mixing brush, so I'll put this aside. And I wanna use my new fancy shiny brush. Okay, and yeah, so there you go, heater's off. So I already, um, I already did the first wash in the live tutorial that I did just an hour before when the quality was terrible, but I left this part because there's a lot of detail in there and actually I don't have an image, which is kind of silly. I should really have an image of this turkey to have an idea of what's going on, but I know there's an ear. There's an ear maybe here-ish, so if I come in, this will be a loose picture because I don't have an image. Uh, as a reference Okay, just want to wake that up a bit. So this is Potter's pink I think from Windsor and Newton and I'm gonna come in here now using the point. This is why I love this brush so much I'm just using that point And oh, man, it's so cool. I wish more companies made brushes like this triangle brushes And actually if you guys know anyone that does um, Let me know yeah, so they've got this little ear here. And then the ear kind of gets tucked in. Let's see. Hmm. I'm gonna add some quinacridum gold, which is this one. 
I always like to twist the brush. It's really important. If you twist the brush a little bit, you're going to come back to a point. And I think I'm going to add a tiny bit under here, a few lines. Now, I don't know how long this is going to take or how far we're going to get. Like, I, I get pretty detailed. And when I do my tutorials for you guys normally, they're all edited, which means all the slow stuff is taken out. So I'm a little concerned. I'm going to I'm going to bore you guys to death. But, um, we'll see. So let me know. Doesn't really make much difference, does it? Because I can't actually paint faster than I do. Okay. Yeah, so first I want to get some, some basic colors down and in here there's lots of little feathers so it's more like stippling or hatching and I also want to keep some of that white now a lot of people talk about the whites in their pictures I guess so many comments about people talking about whites in their pictures and they say how do I preserve the whites and I've probably said this a few times the way I preserve the whites is by not painting them so if you have a brush it can be any any brush it doesn't have to be a specific one um, I just paint around them and I wish I could zoom in. Does that? Mm, hold on, let me look. <gasps> I can. Oh. oh, this is awesome. Okay. There we go. Does that get better? What do you think, Marcy? <laughs> Marcy is my dear friend. She lives right down the road from me. To anybody else who's wondering. Okay, so I hope that works. Good, so let's come. Yeah, so, so I wanna do is preserve the whites. So what I wanna do is paint around them. And that means that using just a, a sharp tip, I'm just drawing, it'd be better if I did this with a darker color, of course, but I'm just kind of dabbing the paper and I'm leaving little spaces everywhere. And that's how I'm preserving the white. Same thing here with the eye. I, I rarely use masking fluid. I find that masking fluid, which if you don't know, is like a, a liquid latex that you can put onto your paper and then you can paint around it or even paint on top of it. And when it's all done, you can pull it back. Um, I find that masking fluid leaves really sharp edges and I don't like the way the sharp edges look. And then I have to do so much work afterwards to, to go in and clean up those sharp edges that it feels like... Um, it, it, it kind of feels like I'm just doing the work twice. Like I might as well take the time in the first place. But not to say that masking fluid is not good. If you like it, you know, there are definitely large, there are, there are reasons to use it for sure. Um, but I tend to not use it too much. Okay, so I've picked up some blue and <laughs> um, we'd have to go back to my other tutorials and you guys could tell me what the colors are on here because I don't remember um, on here, but this is a blue of some kind, and it's some cornacium gold, which I just mixed in. I feel if I talk quieter and move less, maybe the 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 TV the <laughs> the camera would focus better. Uh, maybe that's why it's having such a hard time. Okay, so I've picked up some of this blue, and now, and in the just by talking to you right now, the yellow has already dried. So I'm not don't, not worried about it mixing, and I can tell that because if I if I hold this on an angle, I don't know if you guys can see, but if there was any water on that, it would um, it would shimmer. So by going down a little bit and looking at my page on an angle, I can see that there's no shimmer, whereas now, of course, there is because this is wet. So I tend not to put information in the description. I don't have an affiliate link, um, like an Amazon or anything. So if you guys want to know about any of the brushes I'm using, it, it's not that I'll just say it's down below, click on the link and I'll get a certain amount of payment from it, which is fine if people are doing that. Um, it, I, I just, I don't. So if you are interested in anything, in any of my tutorials, you'll have to send me a little message if I don't mention what it is. 
I have a rabbit named Jelly Bean. <laughs> he's under my table, jumping around, and he's um he's nudging up against my my socks right now. It's very cute. He's trying to get my attention. Okay, that looks pretty good. So working from the inner details out. Now the real question, at least to me, is how much detail do I want to put on this? Do I want it to be really detailed or maybe a mix? And I think, at least with my work, if I if I keep the eyes super realistic and, and detailed, maybe not realistic because it's a painting, it's never gonna be perfectly realistic, but if I keep that um, crisp, and clear and well focused then as you move away from that I think I like to make it so that the rest is a little more free and flowing so I'm gonna pick up a different color I'm gonna zoom out so you guys can see over here yeah that was harder for the camera to focus okay so using the brush, uh, using my, you know, my mixing brush, my junk brush. Jelly bean. He's eating. Stop it. Look, little rabbit, this is live. Quit it. Um, I want to mix a color. Brown. I'm going to make her a brownish, brownish hen. That is Jelly Bean eating against the wall. Quit it. Hey, stop. There, maybe that'll work. I just tossed an orange on the floor next to him. He won't eat it. He'll just go after it. Okay, so this is, what is this one? Um, this is Indian yellow. This is quinacridone gold. And down here we have brown. And I think that was raw umber. Oh, burnt umber. Sorry, yeah, it looks like burnt umber. Okay, so taking some of these colors and again using my mixing brush. Let's start with something light and kind of cover it and then I'm going to work to the dark. And I could do either. You could do any and either. Um, and actually, when I'm all done with this, I will take a photo of the original. Uh, this is a good idea. I'll take a photo of the original and I'll turn it into a vector, into a sketch, and I'll put it on my Etsy page. So if you guys want to go there, download the sketch, and then come back and watch this again, um, you could paint it with me. And um, I actually have a whole bunch I've been putting up. I have 19 little sketches that are all ready for you over on my Etsy. Um, the Etsy is Watercolor by Scarlet. I would have done Watercolor by Scarlet Damon, but it was too long. So, just doing a, a mix of these two, I want to come in here and drop a few dots on top of the yellow and the green. Okay, in some spots, oh, I can zoom in again. Um, some spots it's going to be a little thinner because the skin, the, the, the feathers on the chicken are actually teeny, 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 tiny around the eye. So you would see more of the skin coming through. And when I'm all done, I could go over it with like a gray or a pale pink or something. Really? Jelly bean, stop it. Here, eat a fizzle. Mm, he likes that. That was probably a bad idea. That's going to be loud. <laughs> um, yeah, in order to glaze over the whole thing and, uh, and kind of give it a, a uniformed color. So coming out, these would also, there'd also be little dots in here or tiny little feathers. Hi, Jason. And... What do you think, Marcy? Is that ear too high? I think it actually... Well, it depends on the chicken, right? Okay. 
So this is like a stippling, um, and there's a word for it, which I don't remember at the moment, and I actually wanted to do a tutorial on this technique so that it has its very own technique, but it, I call it dancing, where you kind of jump, skip, hop, and scribble the brush um, across, so it's not defined single lines. They go in all directions, and that way you get more of an organic pattern. It's not like these are all perfectly straight little dots. So if I do it slowly, can you guys see? Okay, if I stop moving and the camera click uh, focuses, there we go. So, give it a second. Okay, so if I'm just kind of wiggling it up and back and down, side to side, Yeah, I think this, this chicken is just going to have to have an ear where it is. Even though I kind of feel like it should be down here. But that's more of her cheek. So, this would be like... This is the Scarlet Breed. <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys know that I have um, a ridiculous amount of chickens? Number of chickens? I think I'm, I'm up to... 46 maybe 46 different chickens some of which live in my chicken coop a few live in my house i know you're gonna all say that's nuts it's not that bad they're tiny they're smaller than parakeets they're very tiny and they occasionally make noise um, and i've actually painted a few of them so i'm coming back with some cronacodum gold i'm putting some of that in here but not everywhere and this is, like, I don't have an image to work with. If I had an image to work with, it would be entirely different. But it's it's just a feeling, right? So, um, I feel like this side should be darker than that side. doesn't have to be. And also, all this stuff that I did here is the first glaze. I think that, that definitely needs more. So we should probably come back and, like, continue our feathers over here because we're getting this pattern going in the middle and nothing else anywhere else and yeah you know what I mean I hope you know what I mean because I can't edit um, and then as the feathers are moving away they're gonna get longer so this could be as simple as just doing a footprint if I move this over um, it means that I'm kind of pushing the brush down and I'm not really pulling, making a line, but I'm making little footprints. And this can be fun, obviously, for, for feathers, but if you were doing bark on a tree, you could do a series of little footprints. They're going to be different sizes, so you have fat parts and then little long parts and then fat parts. Now, right now, I'm just painting it on for you, but as you... Can you see that? The footprint? Let me start with the big footprints. So they're different shapes. There. You could even use them for like, for grass or for hay or, I don't know, whatever it is you have to be painting. Okay, so ooh, let's come back over here as you guys can see and let's zoom out a little bit. Hey, three thumbs up. Aw, you guys are so nice. Okay, so I have to stop for a sec every now and then to make sure that um, the camera catches up because it looks like it's really lagging. Okay, so I'm going to continue this spotty uh, kind of footprint thing. And her feathers also, they wouldn't go perfectly straight down. They would have... It depends. If it was a if it was a male, then he would have long, um, beautiful long feathers around the neck, and then then the feathers on the body. At, whereas if it's a girl, if it's a hen, these ones are going to kind of mix into the rest, but they're not going to be straight. 
because as the chicken moves, right, the feathers move in all directions. So that means that I want to go kind of back and forth, make it a little more natural or a little more organic. Am I in the way? So I'm painting today on um, on my moleskin sketchbook, which is the one I keep in my little travel um, travel travel kit, which I love. It's so cool. So I was taking it everywhere, but then it got dark. Yeah, it gets dark so early. So now it feels like if I try to take it anywhere, it's dark anyway. And painting in the car with a light on, and it's just not the same the same and it's minus what 18 or something ridiculous today so uh hey Kayla so because it's so cold today it feels like um I, I don't want to sit in the car <laughs> anymore while someone is shopping and paint so yeah I've been leaving it I'm leaving my little travel kit at home but I do find or I, I am finding that I pick up the travel kit now I'm not promoting it I'm just saying that it's cool because it's something that I really like um, I've been trying to find one forever, right? I've, I've just always had these little kind of travel baskets or such things. Um, so I've actually picked it up a few times and I go over to the couch because it's that small. I go to the couch and I find myself in front of the wood stove painting and that's pretty neat. So I like the way that looks. Um, right, I came in with another color. This was the brown, the burnt umber. And I'm laying that on top. And did you guys see how that mixed? How the yellow underneath is like this and the brown, I did a little, I slightly changed the direction of the lines. And then because this was still wet, some of this stuff kind of, I'm way too close. You can't see what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Let's see if the camera catches up to me. Okay, so these are the feathers. And this is the first color. Um, the yellow ochre which I just put down and then when I came back with the brown because this was still wet this these lines they kind of bled into the first lines so here now they're a little mixed does that make sense I'm not sure that makes sense I think if I had the ability to edit I might just edit that out but I don't okay wait where is okay <laughs> ah Live is so weird. There, perfect, okay. Just got really cold in the house too. All right, so this looks good. I think we need more definition in that eye because it's starting to look really lost. Now this is not where I would do, uh, do something and then do the darker version and then do the lighter version and then darker version and then as things get darker, do more darker. Um, that, that's not what I'm, that's not my technique. But you guys probably know that because you watch my stuff. So what I mean is the first layer on the eye is soft and it's dry and it looks really nice, but it's, it's not standing out. There's so much dark and color and texture going on here. I need that eye to jump out a little bit more. Let's see if the camera can catch up. Jelly Bean, get down. Well, can you take Jelly Bean and put him off the bed? Or take him off the bed, please? Okay, so I'm gonna grab a smaller brush. Something really tiny. This is, this is a size zero. Jelly Bean's on your pillow. You could just call him and he'll come out. Oh, wait, maybe. <laughs> He's gonna leave a gift on the bed. Um, okay, and now we need something like a black. So let's zoom out. Okay, so we need, um, you can put him in his house if you kick the quail out. I mean, if you put him in the house, the quail will jump out. Um, okay. So this is indigo, and this is Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is a really, really good uh, dark color. It's like a good neutral. It's 
a good blue too. So I'm gonna put some of that here because that will work really well for the eye. Thank you. There go the quail. And yes, I have quail in my house. Um, and then indigo, which is, guys, one direction or the other. <laughs> it's like a little, oh boy. I would say it's like a little zoo in here, but I hate that term. Okay, and this is indigo. So indigo and Payne's gray. Um, do we need anything else? Maybe natural tint would work too. Let's see if some of this as well. Okay. Okay, so I just showed you where these colors are, so that in the hopes that I don't have to tell you where the colors are, because I'm gonna forget. I think I've already forgot forgotten. Okay, so let's go this way and let's zoom in again. Oh no, my battery is getting low. Can I have a plug, babe? Uh, a plug for the cell phone. Do you mind bringing one over? Okay, guys, we have a technical error here. No, not that one. Um, that's no, I need this one. Thank you. Never mind, I'll continue painting. Um, okay, so let's again, I want to roll the brush on the edge in order to get a perfect point. And then I'm going to come down. Yeah, just push it in. Perfect. And then we'll plug it in. Okay, sorry guys, my phone is dying. I have to plug it in. Okay. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so is it close enough? So we're gonna work on that eye. Um, I'm gonna stipple it in and I'm kind of going, I'm not gonna copy the whole thing, but definitely gonna put some where it was before and fill in this, uh, the pupil. But the, the key here, I don't know if you guys can really see it, is that I'm still leaving tiny, tiny dots, little bits, so it's not a solid color. I should probably mention this is my style. Um, so if your style is different, that doesn't mean that it's wrong. Um, I don't even like the word wrong. It just, uh, it's different. Different is good. So if you like to fill things in or, you know, do solid colors, don't worry about it. Keep doing that. You're, you're on the right track. And down here I want to put a few dots almost looks like eyelashes but there would be dots there um, I also don't use black I always mix other colors in order to get uh, a black so this is natural tint and it's quite Purple, purpley brown, actually. You can see it. If I zoom out, let's see. See that? It's got a real, it's got a real purple to it. Um, but it's a good under color. And then if I come back with something darker. In order to build up these, these layers. So what do you think? Is it, uh, 
it's starting to look like an eye. This I'm also going to have to go over that with a glaze later. And then we've got the line that comes all the way down here. It almost looks like makeup. And to even it out, I'm going to come in and add a few more darker bits into these feathers here. Just tapping and stippling. Now another thing that's important is to remember to work in form. Well, I'm not sure if I said that already. So these little hairs are going to go this way. Let's see if I can get the light a little better. There we go. They're going to go, yeah, this way across the back of the head. And sometimes it's easier if you paint pulling out, and sometimes it's easier if you paint pulling in. Um, I think that's a personal choice, but it also depends on the place you're painting. You might find that in some spaces it just works better to go the opposite direction. So if you find that you're cramped or it's just not working, just try pulling out instead of pushing in, or the opposite. And, can you guys tell I'm leaving a few dots? A little dot there, a little dot there. So I'm working around the layers underneath. And I'm not even doing it on purpose, it's just how I paint, so that's how it's, how it's coming to pass. As in, I don't think, oh, I'm gonna put a dot there, let's work my way around. That would be very tedious and hard to do. Okay, too much. I gotta change the light a little bit. Okay, um, so I wanted to zoom out because I wanted to show you that when you have too much paint, like I've lifted up too much paint now, 
I can do a few things. I can either put it on paper towel or I can gently put it onto a watercolor paper and draw a line. Now it can be it can be a fast line or, or, or a thin line, it doesn't matter. But when I draw lines I try to always draw thin lines because I'm um I'm, I'm using them as like practice. So I use my finger to guide, keep my distance, using this finger on the bottom to keep my distance and then bringing the brush. You see that? It's like that, bringing the brush down. So that way, you don't have to worry about the brush going up and down if I'm using my finger as a guide. But this way I know that I've got all that, um, if there's any extra, like I've had a lot, right? It's even hard to show you. Because it's such a small brush, it doesn't pick up very much, but it is possible. So having um, a little piece of paper that you can work on is good. If you use paper towels, sometimes the paper towel will suck or absorb too much of the paint and you'll end up, especially with such a small brush, you'll end up with, um, with a brush that has very little paint on it and that's counterproductive. So I like using uh, watercolor paper and always rub the, the brush on the edge of your palette um, just to make sure that you don't have a water drop. So I'm going to continue down here. Then I think I'm going to switch back to a bigger brush. Uh, maybe even drop some water first. I'm looking at it from an angle. Oh, thanks. I don't think I'd make it look that easy. I think I'd make it look like, I don't know, it takes so long. It can't possibly be easy. If I do it really fast, maybe. Um, but yes, you're just putting paint on a paper or paint on paper. And then practice, that's all it takes, right? And it's not that complicated. I mean, that's probably ridiculous of me to say, but thank you. Thank you, Jason. That was a lovely compliment. Um, so I put a little bit of water in here, and now I'm going to drop um, a darker color. And I'm going to do the same thing, just tapping that color in, but as it hits the water, it's going to bleed out. Try to make it a little more interesting. I'm constantly rotating my brush. I don't know if you guys are noticing. But every time I stop, I rotate my brush. That's to make sure my point um, always stays a point. Uh, I had a teacher once who told me that the easiest way to keep your pencil sharp is to rotate it. Because if you're using the pencil without rotating it, you end up with a dull side. But if you rotate the pencil as you work or as you draw or as you write or whatever, um, it stays nice and sharp, or at least it stays even. You wear it down evenly. So I rotate my brush. Which for anybody who doesn't understand what I'm doing it probably looks ridiculous. But it works for me. <laughs> okay, so I think this beak also needs a little more color and definition. Gently. Now beaks are another one of these funny chicken things. Um, I have a chicken, a little itty bitty cerama, whose half of his beak, if you look at him straight on, half is brown and half 
is yellow. And it is so funny. It's really, it's really quite cute. So if we take this color, and this color, <coughs> you guys can't see that, sorry. Okay, so I'm over here. And I was just mixing. So I'm saying if I take uh, this neutral tint, which is like a purple, and I add a little bit of brown to it, and let's, let's get a different, get my mixing brush and take some brown from the big palette. Okay, I have two options. I can mix it here, or um, I could take the two, so if I use this little guy, this little palette and I take some of the dark brown now either of this works but um, it just creates a different uh, result and I take some of the blue and now instead of mixing them like I did here I'm just going to draw my brush through both of them and I'm going to end up with a line that it's really hard to see that, but the line is, um, it's got a mix of the brown and the natural tint in there, but I can actually see the difference. So in this case, the brown is a little more on the left. So I went back and forth. Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, and then I want to come back with just a plain brush, and in this case, I'm going to take that water drop off the bottom, but um, put a little bit of water here, and bring this paint this way, which is hard to do, because the moment I put the water down, it flows up, um, but I want to soften that. see it in a second. There we go. And then, like I said before, I'm going to come back up here and almost glaze over this. I think I'll wet that a little, or um, dilute it a little, and then add some of that darker color here. Okay, and I'm doing this so I'm not in your light. And that little dot right there. I actually need a photo because I'm not sure. Is that pink or is it black? It depends on the chicken. Some chickens have black skin.
that would be the baby Serrano. Okay. So, I think... Go quickly to the living room and look at one of the chickens. Oh, with the camera? It's really dark in there. I don't think we would see anything. You can hear it though. <laughs> That's funny. They're supposed to be going to bed. It's like having children. Kind of. Not really. Okay, so I want to mix um, a red and maybe a peach. Got a little fuzz on there. Um, and then this yellow mixed in, which actually is a perfect accent. You guys can't see that. Oh no. Let me zoom out of it. There we go. Oh, even more. Okay. Okay, so here I'm mixing. Um, which one is this? I'm mixing deep red with some uh, rose, what did I say was that? It was potter pink, right? Yeah, I think that's potter's pink. So deep red with potter's pink and over here. And then this yellow, which I believe was yellow ochre, has mixed into it and it looks, it looks really cool. So I'm gonna keep that. It's got this almost skin tony to it here. Skin tony, what kind of word is that? Um, it's got a nice, interesting skin tone. And see how when I lift it, I don't know if you guys can see that. It would be so cool if you could. As I put it down, there's these different shades, like the paint kind of separates again, just a little bit. It's not, it's not mixed um, the way one would imagine. So lifting through, I'm going to Just darken up this. Now this would also not be a solid color. This is a little ear. I have no idea what the ear is called. Marcy, you'd have to tell me what the ear is called. Oh, go quickly to the living room and check one of the chickens to double check the colors. Ah, okay. Well, I know the chickens in the living room, they have black skin. Those are ceramos. Um, Jackie has pink skin. She's pretty light. She wouldn't qualify it like this. She's a buff Orpington. But the other ones are ceramics. They're very dark. But this little ear bit, um, which is a funny little ear. There's just a tiny dot in the middle, which is their actual ear canal. Uh, it's made of the same bumpiness as their crown. So it would not be a flat color. Unless, of course, you were doing a very loose style, in which case it might just be a little, a little swift, uh, swive or you know, a, a blob, <laughs> however one wanted to do that. Um, it's looking pretty good. What do you guys think? I also think I'm losing people. <laughs> <laughs> Is this going too long? Should I get to the point? Um, yeah, so down here I've got a little bit of pink, which is a little too much pink here, and this color isn't really filling in. But I don't want to fill this in too much. I like that this is really soft because I think the attention should go up here. If I made it really detailed at the bottom, I would lose the attention to the eye. I'm also going to have to let it dry and then I can go over with an even darker, maybe a mix of a few of these things um, in order to really, really darken up that eye. And I'll put the final image onto Instagram. So if you guys wanted to see what it looks like, I won't be able to add it here because obviously I'm not editing this, which is so cool. So cool. This is like 55 minutes at the moment. Oh, it would take me like days to edit 55 minutes. Um, here, maybe I'll add a little more. This is the problem with me and painting. I get into it and I just keep going. Oh, we got fuzz. Every time we add another layer, uh, the image becomes deeper. Especially if it's a really tiny bit that's just layered on top of the stuff be, uh, underneath it. So it's not, it's not a full cover. It's a little, 
Does that make sense? A little more, a little more, a little more. So just tiny little bits will be slightly darker. Do the line on the top. And a few dots for the line on the bottom. And this time, this is even less dots than I did before. And of course, now I have to look at it because right now it's standing out a little too much. Okay, and what I said I wanted to do was way down here. I want to add just a little more on the edges. These are footprints. Just using my brush and dropping some footprints, um, which I can see if I look at the page on an angle. And then I'm going to lift some of this. I don't want to get too much water in there. So I'll lift some of that. Maybe mix some of that in too. And then more fuzz. And then drop it in. And again, as it hits those little spots of water, it's going to blend. Drinking wine and watching. Ooh. That's a good idea. I don't know, would that be responsible of me if I was to uh, to paint and have a glass of wine at the same time? <laughs> Could go terribly wrong. But probably not. I don't, I wouldn't do more than one glass. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> oh boy. Very cool. Okay, so I want to add more. In here. I feel like that pink is just too much down there. And here I'm just pulling the brush sideways so that the footprint is still a footprint, but it's not um, an individual line. And also, I want to fill in some of these little white bits um, around the wattle. It's not me, just tiny little spots there. Okay, oops, hold on, let's see if that worked. Okay, we'll let the camera focus. Yeah, it could get interesting, <laughs> for sure. I'm still not happy about this pink, but you know what? I have a lot of birds that have a lot of red in them, so maybe the best thing, actually, why didn't I think about that, is just to add more. Okay, that will solve that. Because, you know, in watercolor, you can't fix your mistakes, but you can certainly um, play with them. There, that kind of softened it out, didn't it? Now I could come back with an eradicator and I could actually lift things, but that would be way, way, way too much work. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to do anything like that. So, hey, I think we're done. Now, the fun part is signing my name. Let's see if I can do it with this brand new brush. And the next question is where? There's not a lot of room at the bottom. Um, when I sign my name, I like to hold it really close to the bottom because you're going to have uh, more... Let me zoom out so I can explain this. You're going to have more control the closer you hold the brush to the bristles. And it's also nice to practice. Yeah, see. I can see that that's not going to work. It's too long. Which is why one likes to practice. There we go, okay. Good. 
make sure you guys can see. Eh, picked up a hair. kind of funny that um, um, I have no problem painting all these other things, but when it comes to signing my name, it's a little too pointy. Okay. Voila! Ta-da! <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I think I read all of your comments, which is really cool, and I introduced a new brush, and we did a tutorial. Hey, this was a success. Thanks for watching, guys. This was really, really cool. I'm so glad you stuck it out and watched till the end. Um, yeah. Anyway, I will, um, I think I'll do this again. I'm having a lot of fun. I have to do a little more research and figure out how, because um, I'm sure that there is a way where I can use my computer and use multiple cameras. I'm not there yet. <laughs> this is only uh, live number three, and, um, and we'll see, I've got to do a lot more research, but for now this was so cool and so much better than having to do all that editing. <laughs> well, I mean, I'll probably still have to do editing, but we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. And I don't know when it'll be and I don't know if it'll be live or not, but um, we'll see. Have a great day, guys, or a great evening. Uh, thanks, Jason. Toodaloo.